Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium.
or something. Testing, testing. Good afternoon, Sean. I can hear you over there. Hi, Rory. How are you doing? Sean Joyce here. Rory uh, McCusker already on the call. <laughs> I had a few technical I... glitches here getting connected, but uh, I have been able to see the shots. It's been an interesting first end so far. Yeah, we'll log it as glitch number 3008. <laughs> well, as glitches go, this one's not too bad. I, I was checking the YouTube stream while I was having my own difficulties here, and I do know that the viewers at home can at least see the game and hear the uh, audio from ice level. They might be getting tired of my voice by now anyway. Uh, just to keep things accessible and free for everyone out there, we use a lot of intersecting services. You know, it's five or six different things that could, you know, maybe go wrong, maybe go right. <laughs> so we just try to take care of number one, like you said, can see the game, good quality images and all that stuff. And if we're lucky enough, we uh, get all the glitches ironed out and we can have some commentary. So I don't think anybody was able to hear me before. Just to update uh, on what we do know. Of course, the two teams draw to the button before the uh, end starts for Last Rock here in the first end of play. It is the team out of Korea with Last Rock here as they throw the Reds. They we're looking to come down to that stone at the back of the forefoot maybe nudge it back roll in behind cover a little light just rubs the guard now might have put it into the 12 foot but it continues to be steve laycock now sitting one that's stone at the back of the button second shot definitely belongs to the koreans and i, I do think that stone that they just nudged at the top of the 12 foot is in the rings now steve laycock has to be a little bit careful there is a the stone that they just threw the shooter is available for a run back with last rock that could be for as many as three it's going to look to come around again but you have to be careful not to leave the run double here another steve laycock game where they're getting into it early sean they uh they don't mind playing with rocks in play i've always known steve is this really cerebral skip that just is really comfortable i shouldn't say comfortable but likes to play around with angles frozen rocks specifically always trying to create that um you know pile of stones gain the advantage with the angles and then make it all kind of explode later in the end yeah maybe not explode as much as what you would see with some of the teams that throw the bigger weights not that steve can't do that it's not his i wouldn't call it his strength but he's such a great touch player so when he gets these rocks into tight areas he can chisel in off rocks he plays the the little angles as you said so well i would agree with that for sure yeah sean meacham with his second stone brings it around to the top of the forefoot and he'll sit two the koreans looking at the uh the run back it is there if he comes just across the face of the red and drives the red just ever so slightly across the face of the yellow at the top four foot. He could double the red, the yellows out, and I think he would be sitting three. I do believe that rock at the top of the 12 foot is, has got a nibble of the 12. They're on the brush here right away. He wants to hit this just off the nose. This is going to have to hold. 
Beauty. Great job by the brushers. They do hold it straight enough. Makes the double. Did lose his own rock at the back of the forefoot. So just sitting the two right now. Pretty near perfect result. 99%. Let's give it. Steve Lycock still has a shot here to get out of trouble this end uh, with the rollover on that uh, the shooter. The three rocks out in front, the one just nibbling and the two guards, they're all overlapped. So if Steve Laycock can make the roll in behind cover here, there isn't anything he can run back on the next one. Steve team actually registered out of Swift Current this year. Sean Meacham and Chris Heikert, that would be their home club anyway. They probably see this ice on a regular basis. Chris, actually the manager of the Swift Curling Swift Current Curling Club. Yeah, Chris with a great sense of humor. He'd, he'd tell you he doesn't have time to curl with managing all the stuff he's managing over here, but that may be a little modest. I've known Chris for a long time. Curled with Chris, curled with his dad, so I think I can get away with saying this. It, it certainly doesn't look like he sweeps very much. He sweeps like a skip. He's got a, There's a lot of vibration in that body as he sweeps. <laughs> Now they make the hit, not able to get the roll, stays right there. It is shot rock. I want to get my apologies out of the way right right away in the first end. I uh, I am going to, I'm sure, butcher some of the names for these Korean players, and I do apologize for that. If there's anybody watching that are fans of the Koreans, I, I do the best I can. Skip is Young Suk Jung. Looking for the hit and roll. And he's kind of in the same spot here as, as Steve Laycock. If he can get the roll, Steve doesn't have anything that he could run back to make the double. Brushers were on this early. He's definitely going to roll, but I think past the guards. Now, Sean Meacham joining it at the T line would like to get it all the way out if he could. So really two choices for Steve Laycock, not even looking at hitting the red stone. Now, if you hit it, you're not going to roll into the rings, and there would still be a split available there for the Koreans to try to get two if they wanted to take it on. If that's the case, you may as well come around. It's probably a higher level of comfort with this in the first end than a lot of shots because so much of the pregame practice is geared on draw to the button. Well, that's what you're throwing right here. I was noticing this last night in the uh, game against Cooey that Laycock was playing. Steve's got this really specific motion, this this kind of routine he goes through as he gets in the hack. Very intense look down at the broom, a big exhale of breath, uh, some interesting focus strategies you can see on display there. It's, it's not new either. He's, he's had that for a long time. Uh, Very deliberate as he gets into the hacks. Rusher's just waiting for the line call here. It's starting to move. Uh, nicely thrown and well managed down the ice. That's one of those stones that, because of the way you know it moves, the brushers, if you, if you throw it to the brushers, they can wait for it to curl. At the end, they bring it back right onto the top of the button. Might be a sliver of that exposed, but this is a tough shot. Jung has to move it to score. Tough to play enough weight to pass it all the way through and uh, still hope you're going to hit enough of it to stay. And really with the overlap at the front, doesn't have anything he can run back. This is his only shot to score. And from the movement we've seen on this ice all week long, there is still the chance he could pass this through the rings and perhaps hang his shooter on the edge somewhere and, and pick up a deuce here. In the earlier game against Manners in the seventh end, um, Skip Jung here made a really nice soft weight shot, very similar to this one they're attempting here, and he got a lot of movement out of his stone. 
Got some movement here. I think he actually rubbed it just on the way by, but not enough to move it. It'll be a steal of one for Steve Laycock here in the opening end to play. They'll take the one nothing lead. Jung will keep Last Rock into the second. I came to Val Marie to see where my mother was born, and it turns out she lived along the Northwest Mounted Police Trail. So every morning, my mom would get up, and that's the view she would have. 70 Mile Butte. Named that because it's halfway between Wood Mountain and the east end of Cypress Hills, and that's the police patrol line. And she will walk that line to school to Val Marie every day. What I know for sure is that whenever I need to step back and take a look at the bigger picture, this is where I come. Here, you can see more than 20 kilometers in every direction. I came for the homestead, but the butte brought me home. The Roaring Game. We all love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Second end underway after an outstanding draw with his final stone. Steve Laycock picks up the steal of one in the first. Now with the lead in the second, they threw the tight center guard. The Koreans play the corner guard and now Braden Stewart coming around the center. Dead buried top of the forefoot. Lead for the Koreans, Jihoon Song. The second, Sung Hoon Oh. The third is Jung Du Park. And the skip, Young Sik Jong. And once again, I apologize if I've mispronounced any of those names. Nobody wants to hear their name mispronounced. I think that was a very admirable effort, Sean. I might stick to the last names from here on in, uh, not to be disrespectful, disrespectful or referring to them as their last names, but at least there's only one syllable. <laughs> it it just looks a little easier. Looking for the corner freeze there, and a little bit strong comes by everything, comes to rest back of the eight foot. It is buried, and second shot. Really nice jackets on the Korean on the Korean team here, and what I've what I've noticed about the teams from Korea, almost every single one of them has the the province, their home province, on the jacket as well. So a little territorial, uh, as as well. They're trying to represent their not their just their home country, but their home area as well. Chris Eichert looking to come down to that stone that was just thrown back of the eight foot. to work the brushes a little bit just to make sure they get by their own at the top of the forefoot and will nudge that stone back does stay for a bite to the back 12. Laycock sitting two. Five rocks have come to rest they do have the option to play the guard now looks like they're looking at the run back
big weight on this attempt. There's a, way, a chance he could make all three of the move if he hits it just right. Gets one, gets two, catches the third one. The stone at the top won't leave the rings, but it does pop out from behind cover. So Laycock sitting one, it's open in the eight foot. And it does make that stone at the, uh, at the back 12, even though it's just hanging on for a nibble. There's always the chance it could come back on and uh, end up on the scoreboard. So Steve Laycock going to make a play on it right now, asking Chris Eichert to come down, nudge it again. Boy, this one's really taking off. They're going to have to go to get hit by the guard. And if he's on the guard, does he put it into the rings? Nudges the guard. Actually, at the end, might have spun out. It's it's tough to tell whether that's biting or not. Rory, you see a lot of the overhead cameras. Is that in or not? Uh, when it's near the edge like that, I've heard you talk about this, and you're, you're absolutely correct. When the camera's over the button, you get a little bit of that angle that makes it, that you can see a little bit of white, even if they're, that rock yeah. is in the ring. So, very tough. Yeah, but you're, I, I ask you specifically, because, of course, you're the producer. You see all of the overhead shots, and... Maybe you've had a chance to get an idea of just how there's always going to be a fine line right there. How much that's, how much white can you see, and that rock is still in the rings? That's tough. That's all right. I will stop avoiding the question. I think it's in. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I have learned uh, this week, and uh, called a couple of games previously with Mark No, and we've seen a number of measurements in our games, and uh, yeah. somebody has to remind these players that they're on TV, and and uh, when they're both looking at at the two rocks. Somebody should maybe tell us what they think is Shaw Rock. Point. Do something just so we have an idea. You know what? You, you're echoing the wishes of curling fans everywhere when you say <laughs> that, John. And even, even at the Grand Slam of curling, which I worked with for many, I don't know about many, but like three or four years with uh, with Jerry Gertz and curling, curling Zone here. Anyways, these players get in this mindset when they're on the ice. They're just so in the zone. They're in their own kind of like high athletic performance zones. You could tell them a million times, hey, tell the scorekeeper who scored that end. Uh, you know, indicate which rock was closer on a measure. Someone tell someone who got hammer on the coin flip. All of these things, they're not thinking about it at all. Some do. Uh, a notable, you know, Brad Goosh, who's really good at telling, telling the scorekeepers. Uh, Mark Kennedy, another, another one who's really good. But those are the only two men's players that stand out. These guys get in their own universe. And, uh, yeah, they... I'm sure they do care if we know, but while they're on the ice, they just don't have the mental capacity to remember. Can be frustrating, though. Well, a couple of miscues in a row. The uh, Koreans looking to make the hit on the yellow, just rub it and actually pushes it over behind the corner guard. And then the hit attempt from the Laycock team. I'm sure they wanted to stay in the back of the rings, just rolls out the back. Still, that Yellowstone is buried, and it's behind the T-line, so... Koreans can't really make a play on it. They're going to look to play the draw. Can use it for backing. The only reason they'd be worried about perhaps taking it out, and, and it's not something you need to worry about quite this early yet in the end. Once again, if that stone on the uh, right-hand side as they approach the house, is that one biting? We just, it's just too close to tell from here. Comes down, nudges the yellow pack just a little bit, but does stay mostly in front of it. And probably half in behind cover. Down in three and a half rotations on that inside out draw. I was actually out on the ice last night once the players left. Just throwing a couple rocks, seeing what, what the conditions are like out there and, and what making these types of shots are. I threw some inside out uh, shots like that. And if I didn't have three rotations, that thing was spinning into the board. So really just like solid positive throw from uh the korean third there kind of kept it kept it true the whole way down we don't have mics not direct... bikes. sorry we do have we don't have mics directly on the players there are mics at the uh ice level so i do believe the viewers at home can hear you know, some of the sweep calls, hear the rocks make the contact, but we can't always hear the, the discussions. And I, I don't think they felt like they could uh, 
get to that redstone with enough to pass it by the yellow. So just playing the freeze, it comes up a little bit short. It is on a good angle, but you can see all of that yellow stone. Yeah, it's correct. Uh, the viewers uh, can hear the ice ice level noise. Ends up sounding like a lot of just kind of hollering and clashing of rocks, but I find it very soothing. I could go to sleep to that oh, really? like, noise. I, I can't actually hear it in my headset, but the, the one place where I'd like to be able to hear even just that is, uh, and it's it's the advantage that the viewers at home have over me right now, is that you can tell, you can, you know, when they really start to holler on the sweep call and the urgency, you can hear that in the voices. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's Sometimes sure. it's a little hard to tell what the sweep calls are like. And with the amount of big yeah, movement agreed. here, that's, that's important. We've uh, we've experimented with different microphone setups, as as people can probably guess. Microphones and cords and audio equipment is extremely expensive. Um, rivals video equipment even. So we have to be careful with how much we're we're committing towards certain things. But we've tried putting a mic right on the hog line on either end, hoping to get more of the skips voice than anything. And we've also tried miking the whole sheet, putting six or seven microphones down the whole sheet evenly. That second system ended up being a little more reliable and uh, successful. But yeah, like you said, Sean, it's it's just tough to make out exactly what the details of what they're saying. And sometimes, like you said, the intensity of their voice is the only clue you can really get. Now the Koreans attempting to pass that Yellowstone by it actually makes contact with the red but bumps it out into the open so Laycock sitting shot at the back of the forefoot but Xiong has second and third and it would be tough for Steve Laycock I mean he could he could probably pick out the uh let's see I guess that's the second shot stone it would be risky to play the double you play the double you have the risk of jamming onto a yellow and and uh, you, you lose the shooter well now the Koreans are hitting to sit three When you get into a spot like this, it's hard to tell even as they're pointing. I, I think what Steve Laycock is looking at, and I'm not positive, but what I think he's looking at is to come down with the draw, try to get to the inside of his own stone at the back of the forefoot, and then the Koreans don't have a way to get it out because it'll uh, you nudge that back about six inches, you create a pocket behind the one you're about to throw, and and it's jamming on something. Yeah, pretty scary is the team without hammer in this situation yeah you, you feel very funneled into one kind of area and you, you better be perfect well with that broom i don't think he's looking to get across the face of his own that's a lot of ice they could be guarding sean do you think <sighs> well <laughs> the broom kind of matches the idea of a guard but it's it's a little uncharacteristic to try to guard a stone at the back forefoot and certainly with the amount of late movement we've seen here like, even if you split the center line with the guard, Jung probably has room to get to that stone. That's a good point. I guess the, the tighter you bring the guard, the easier a potential run back might be. Although yeah. you'd be running a yellow stone in, not a red. As much as they are sitting shot rock here, it's it's not a great situation for the, the Laycock team, and that's what all the discussion was about. There's there's all kinds of potential for for trouble here. Sean Meacham kind of crouching in the back of the forefoot. Looks like he's trying to manage an angle there, so I bet they are. Okay. Not a lot of sweep from the team. Split the center. It's tight enough that it would be tough to come around and, and get to that stone. You play the run back and make it. Steve Laycock at least has something that he could come around with his last one. This is the spot where I'm I'm not really missing player mics, because even if we had them, I don't speak Korean, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't know what they were saying anyway. 
I do like hearing who talks more or less than it's how talkative is the third. Does one of the front end players have something to contribute? You can still kind of tell that sort of stuff. But yeah, you're right. As far as understanding the actual ideas they're communicating, not a chance. Well, even without hearing them talk, I can tell you the third looks like he wants to play the run back. The other option, you could just come around, but you're you're probably uh, limiting yourself to a shot for two if you do that. It does look two like that's fun ends to start. I was just gonna say two yeah. fun ends to start this game. The interesting thing about uh, the run back double is if you make it, now there's just the one Yellowstone in, in the rings. And uh, again, it starts to matter, potentially matter, about that uh, redstone that might be biting. Playing the draw, though. I'm going to go out on a limb and say if he's playing the draw here, we're never going to need the biter stick to find out if that rock is biting. So Jung looking to come around. Stone at the top of the 12 foot. It was just thrown by Steve Laycock. Probably not necessarily looking to dead bury this either. If he can get half a round for shot rock, leave himself some angle to promote it onto that stone at the back four with the last one. In the end, they were sweeping a little bit for curl. Yeah, I think they were... They were uh, trying to carve it over, trying to get a little extra curl. Well, they were sweeping that like it was top top eight, top four the whole way, and then as it came to the house, both sweepers sort of stood up on it. May have may have had a little more momentum than they guessed. Looks like he's got the edge of that stone under the guard. Steve Laycock has to be a little bit careful. Looks like with that broom, he's going to play just uh, a back four foot weight, try to tap that stone back. Same kind of thing we were talking about as an option on his last one. If he taps that red one back about two feet, his shooter is sitting in front of three rocks. It makes it real hard to remove it. The Koreans do have that uh, redstone that we were talking about, wondering whether or not it's biting or not. It's also potentially available to come in off it with the last one. That might be all he's got left. Team Laycock might have some some bad memories of last night where they missed a freeze only by a few inches and Kevin Cooey came and made them pay big score in that game. You know what? Knowing these guys as I do, and I know these guys pretty well, I'm pretty sure you're the only one thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. But they're going to be more than a few inches off missing this one. He's took the same ice as he took on the first shot and with that little bit extra weight doesn't get anywhere near the line he was looking for and the koreans did uh, give us an indication there they pointed right away which helps me out they think they've got third at the top of the house now so is there a way that you can play the the redstone on the corner of the button onto the one at the top or the back of the forefoot and hold your shooter perhaps for three Stone on the edge of the button is Shot Rock, obviously. The one back four foot is second. Third is the red stone belonging to the Koreans at the top of the eight foot. I believe fourth is is uh, Steve Laycock's yellow at the back eight. And I don't see any way that they're moving both yellows. It does look like they're going to make a play on this. So play the... Uh, the stone on the edge of the button onto the yellow at the back forefoot. As long as you stuff that, you're going to get two because you got second at the top of the eight foot. And if you can hold the shooter, this could be for three. Yeah, they seem quite determined on lining up that uh, that angle to get the third one, like you said. I mean, well, the other you get option, it absolutely perfect. You get perfect. Is it for four, Sean? Uh, you'd have to move both yellows for that. I don't. 
don't think you can get a rock to the second yellow. They did briefly just, discuss, do we not think this is there? Because you, you could just draw for two. And they they tapped the ice, but uh, quickly dismissed that. They're going to play this. Now, with that broom, do you think he's trying to just chisel it paper thin? Well, it's so I, with the third in the house was lining up this little piece of the pie angle to try and wick it and get the back Boy, one. I guess we'll find out. It's just a paper thin tick on the first one if you're going to get the back one. And I still think the shooter probably spins out. Makes the hit, jams it across, pinballs a few rocks, and boy, I think he might have three, probably not the way they expected to get it. Not going to call for the measurement. The logo kind of in the way, blocking my view, but I think it's three points for Zhang. He'll jump out to a 3-1 to lead over Steve Laycock after two ends of play. Laycock with last rock when we come back. The Roaring Game. We all love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Third end just underway here from Swift Current. Sea event qualifiers. Young Suk Jung with his final stone. Moving a few Laycock stones. Pinballed a little bit. Caught the one at the back and actually killed the, uh, the fourth shot as well. So able to pick up three points. Jumps out to a big lead here early in this game. Steve Laycock now with Last Rock as we play the uh, third end and I didn't see how the uh, the end materialized, how it started, but we did see the uh, tight center guard was thrown first. And we do see Braden Stewart's first rock sitting over in the corner, and I'm not sure what happened to that one. I'm sure they would have been calling for a corner guard, but uh, don't know what happened to it. Yeah, playing against Braden Stewart, very consistent player. Kind of surprising to see that stone in the corner there. Makes a nice freeze with his second, right at the top of the button. Cranes will look to follow that down, but you know, that's when you get a complete miss like that early in the end, already here in this third end, Steve Laycock maybe gonna be forced to think about blanking. Not that he minds having last rock and even end anyway. Blank's probably not too far back in his in his mind anyway. Rory, you and I were talking about this just before we went on air. It's something I should point out for the viewers at home that were watching this morning. I, I had uh, 
on the draw that I had in front of me, uh, Aaron Sluchinski was, uh, we thought he was going to be playing against Steve Laycock here. And I'm sure a number of other people were looking at the same draw. I was, it was the draw we had posted online. The master draw is at the Swift current facility and it, it's uh, it got worked out between draws. It sounds like, uh, the drops of the, the teams that were dropping from the B final into these C final games, the master draw was a little different from what we had online. So that's why you're seeing Laycock here playing Jung. We just didn't have the brackets quite right. Yeah, it's a, it's quite a struggle to get all of these details right when it's one central suppository uh, repository. I know that when I worked for Jerry trying to make draws online, that was a full-time day job. <laughs> well, I think they had late, as, as I were, if I saw my information correctly, I think there were some late changes to this draw too. I think at one point in time it was 18 teams. Um, now 16 is a nicer draw, but if it was already done at 18, well, things change. Yeah, that's another good point. Nice hit and roll there. Now Laycock with some pressure on the Koreans. We're going to see another attempt at a run back. They've played several of these already, throwing them very well. Wow. Makes the run, makes contact with all the rocks in the house, leaves just the one yellow stone at the back of the forefoot. That's a nice slide for uh, runbacks. Oh, and he's disappointed he didn't get them both. But <laughs> that's still a very accurate spot to hit the rock like that. Really nice slide from that second. Does put uh, Laycock back in a position where he's no longer thinking about the blank and, and perhaps thinking about two or even three. They've got a corner guard to work with. They're going to look to come around that now. Chris Heikert on the intern. Rushers haven't really left this one, but they need to give it time to curl here. They even switch the positions at the end, try to carve it over that last little bit. He'll get the uh, edge of the rock in behind cover. Rushers wanted to go on that early, and I think, you know, they, they realize if they get that probably two feet deeper, it's dead buried. Just needed to give them a little bit more weight to work with. Still, no double available. Laycock sitting two. Green's looking at making the run back on their own guard. This is the only way you can get the double. You've got the angle from this side. If you can make the run back, there might be a chance to get both yellows, but he's going to make contact with one of them. Well, that is not the way you wanted to miss. Drives it by the stone in the in the uh, top of the eight foot and rolls over, covers it. So now Laycock sitting two with last rock and throwing. Got to be thinking about three and that's your choices. You go open side knowing that you've left the Koreans a chance to maybe hit and roll behind or do you Christmas tree it? And if you do that, you know he's going to play the run back again, and he might kill all three of them. Well, you can tell Steve Laycock, not a huge fan of his stone's placement in the back of the button there. He keeps signaling nope. at it. Well, he knows the Koreans can play the hit and roll off it. The problem with drawing to the open side, they always have the chance to hit and roll behind cover. The problem with playing the Christmas tree shot, that's the other one he's talked about, draw to the top of the forefoot and, and uh, don't show them all of any of the yellow rocks, is that you could see the Koreans play the run back again, and the potential is there if you put the rock in that spot. They could make the triple, and then your end is gone. Of course. And and really, setting up those angles, you would want to re-guard it yourself, so now you're in a situation where you're throwing center guards with hammer, attempting to protect one area. I think with, with this, you kind of diversify your, your stones, get the house working a little bit, spread the house out a little bit, and 
as Yellowstones will eventually be removed this end, you may be left with an open deuce or maybe even three. Well, the worry is, well, the Koreans not even looking to play it. The worry would be that uh, the Koreans would play the hit and roll behind cover like that. And if they do, you still have three stones to to deal with the stone that they're about to deliver. If they don't get it buried, Steve Laycock will have a chance to make a play on this stone, roll away from the guards, and, and now... Uh, the three looks very dangerous so you really need this roll this might be your only good chance to get out of this end not many teams can say they have a sponsored spider apparel jacket this, this is one of the best <laughs> dressed teams i've seen on the ice Park looking for the roll behind cover. They've picked up the sweep on the offside, looking for some extra curly, still on the outside of this rock. Now they've gone to plan B. When they realize they weren't going to roll behind cover, let's at least try to roll over and maybe group the yellow so that we can get a double later on and hold them to two. Steve Laycock now. He'll want to make a play on the redstone. And the key to this is you want to roll to a spot where you don't leave a double. And don't leave him the easy roll in behind cover either. So that's why you see Steve looking at it. The long roll would be great. If he could roll way past the guard into the 12 foot, there'd be no doubles and no hit and roll behind cover. But you don't want to roll out either. John Meacham, the third, is his final stone of this third end, and he's on the outside of this rock as well. Makes the hit, rolls over, nudges his own. Does sit three, but there's a double available now. Korean back end couldn't wait to get over there and line up this double as soon as they saw Meach was going to roll a little outside there. You know, Very thankful for a double opportunity after all they've kind of the opportunities that have passed them by this end. They are thankful for the double, but they're not out of trouble if they make it. The, the one little thing that helps the Laycock team when they nudge that stone over, you make the double now, you're not shot rock. Steve Laycock will have the option if he wants to try it to come around again and, and still could count three here in this end. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a different story here. If you could make the double and be shot rock, then Steve Laycock probably has to play it. Makes the hit. Dangerously close to going over the top of the second one, but does clip it on the way by. Steve Laycock not even going to think about splitting the house. You know, you could. You could split the house. Make sure you're going to get your two. Steve Laycock not even thinking about that. Going to come around. From the wide side see if you can't score three here the only way this goes wrong for you is you slide behind the t-line and the koreans make the freeze this goes back to what we were just talking about last end with stevie such a good touch player you just expect him to make these certainly know there's been plenty of finish on on this ice with these rocks all weekend long he actually doesn't need to be anywhere near the long guard he can probably pass it by uh, eight to ten inches and it'll still be tight to the one in the rings these ones require some special attention as a sweeper you just don't usually play this turn this wide on a it's kind of halfway between going out in the weeds and staying in the, the good stuff, as you would hear them say, say sometimes. So speed can sometimes be tough to guess out here. Lots of room by the guard. Moving big now. Much tighter to the stone in the rings. 
and does come to rest in the four, but is that maybe just a little bit too deep? Korean's eyeing up the run back. That's uh, a good yeah. bounce back from Steve Laycock. The other option really just slid that little bit too deep. The Koreans could play the draw from the intern side, get to the corner of that stone and, and take everything away. Really good draw by Steve, but uh, you know, in a perfect world, he'd like to have that about a foot higher. shot still has to be made though and it's it's not easy either you got to set it right on the corner of that yellowstone if you're going to be shot rock if you're a little bit short steve laycock's probably going to have a draw for at least two and if you don't get onto the corner he's going to have a hit for three some uh, some information exchange going on front end in the skipper here well the skipper is has never looked like he was thrilled about playing this they certainly, they love the runbacks. They play them very well. That was the first shot he looked at. But it's kind of an all or nothing shot. You got a couple of options with this. Even if you're not shot rock, as long as you get a corner in front of that yellow, you've held Steve to a chance for, for two. And you could certainly make the, the ring small for that two as well. They have already missed one run back this end. It, it, it does, uh, yeah. It does look like he's kind of... Thinking to himself, well, what are the what's the likelihood I miss all of those yellows if I bash that thing back? And you can't really blame him. The result from this shot, though, Sean, like you said, is the is the better result. You, you uh, put this right on the corner of a shot rock, and you might steal. Might steal or force to one. Even if you make the run back perfectly, it's likely a blank coming your way. Crusher's just waiting on the line now. The question is, is this uh, this going to stop in time? couldn't quite get that curl out of it at the end there they almost looked like they wanted to sweep it for curl but they were afraid to take it by the yellow yeah and yeah, the outside looks sweeper like there. yeah from the hack end you can see steve lake looks like you can see just all of that rock if he gets to the nose he can pass it by the yellow this would be for three even if he touches the yellow a little bit on the way by because he's not going to throw this with a real big weight Yeah, exactly like you said, Sean. When you can see from this straight-on angle about a, an inch of space between those stones, you can even hit this a little little high side and you're going to be okay. I think you're still going to get your three. Yeah, you have to think with that broom, he's only throwing about hack weight. If you rub the yellow on the way by, that's not going to take a lot of weight off the red stone and the yellow is not going to go very far. It's all about the line. They jumped the brush right away. Looked like he might have been a little inside when he let it go. They are going to have to go to get by the stone at the top of the eight. Well, I don't know if they're even going to get by the guard. Definitely looked like Steve Laycock might have been a little bit inside on that release. It's going to be a steal of one for the Koreans. They take a four to one lead now after three ends of play. Laycock with last rock still in the fourth. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G, sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it, so free money for you. So hopefully check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house logo.
Sean Joyce, Rory McCusker here with you live from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown on the Sastel Curling yes, Stadium. The Koreans with a 4-1 to one lead now as we begin play in the fourth. They bring their first stone into the top of the 8-foot. Braden Stewart being asked to throw the corner guard. and We didn't get back in time last end. Uh, Braden had a rock that ended up in the back corner. and it, You know, it looked like he was just sliding out there. He felt something underneath that rock. You, you could see just as he crossed through the house, he had a bit of a wiggle on the rock. and You can see the Koreans even behind him cleaning that up. So I wonder if he didn't feel like he had something underneath it, had to make an adjustment. The adjustment works out well. He gets the corner guard. That was the rock that went through the rings last end as well. We didn't quite see how that happened. Or got we don't know. Yeah, we don't know what oh, happened. Yeah, good point. good point. I'm sure I'm sure they would have been playing a corner guard. I don't imagine they were playing a tick. They were down to. Uh, so you have to think something happened to that stone. I can't imagine he sailed it through. I, I would be more tempted to think it picked. And there you see that one definitely. There was something because you could see him move as he was sliding through, and that that just looked like it felt like it had something underneath it. Nice tight guard this time from the Koreans. Dead buried on, uh, dead buries the shot rock. This time, Steve Laycock looking for kind of a variation on the tick. Wants to put the uh, redstone into the back of the house somewhere, probably oh, yes. behind the corner guard. Needs to keep the shooter out of the rings, though, so looking to hit this fairly thick. If he, uh, if he played it like a split, the shooter would roll in, and then you'd be able to hit it. He'd like to keep it out in front, the free guard zone. have to wait on this to curl doesn't even have a piece of the top stone yet just going to rub it and of course with that weight when you don't get the piece of the stone you were looking for carries right through the back of the rings and all the way out of play advantage here to the Koreans not really thinking necessarily about stealing a stone on the top of the eight foot. You don't necessarily think you're going to steal with that, but you know that Steve Laycock has to deal with the middle. So throw another center guard, make it tougher, make it uh, take him a few more rocks. As long as he's trying to, to clean up the middle, he's not trying to score. It's part of the cat and mouse that uh, teams play at this level. Yeah, I'm seeing more and more of this, uh, Sean. The new, the new defense is a good offense kind of thing. Yeah, well, and it makes some sense, right? You know, for Steve Laycock, he doesn't want to play this whole end in the middle. And if he's going to have to deal with those rocks in the middle, as long as he's dealing with those, he's not trying to come around his corner guards. Now, they probably didn't want it that tight. There's probably a shot there now if uh, Steve wants to get all three reds moving. He can probably doesn't kill them all because he'd like to keep his shooter for a corner guard but you just see the way the angles are lining up if uh chris hiker here hits this just off the nose rolls his shooter over for a corner guard probably stuffs the first one but the second one might catch the rock in the rings as well definitely got potential Catches one, catches two. Actually, we'll get the double peel, and his shooter rolls just about a foot off the center line. A little Lake surprised can. they didn't want to roll that a little further. But I guess clearing those two reds in, in, on the center line was the priority of that shot, I suppose. I think he definitely wanted to clear two rocks out of the center. Didn't necessarily have to be those specific two. He would have had to hit it a little thinner to touch the stone in the back. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna punch right in on these jackets once again. I'm obsessed with these <laughs> things. Two characters, advertisements. Pretty good work on those things. Well, this has been our our run back aficionado so far, Sean. This is second for the for Team Jean. Made some softer weight this time. 
Yeah, he's had uh, a couple of good runbacks now looking for more of a delicate shot. He's looking to kill the guard, and uh, the bonus would be to get the shooter into the rings. Going to roll under his own all the way to the divider, though. Not really critical there that they get that rock into the rings, but it was the one, if you, if you get a biter out of that, you've got uh, you, Steve Laycock looking at at least a force. And as they discussed playing the freeze here, I think this all comes down to they've seen the Koreans play a number of runbacks already. They know they're pretty good at them. So you're playing the freeze on the red here just because you know if you play the hit and roll behind cover, they're going to try to run it back and, and kill both of them. You don't want to leave them the run back double. So you play the freeze. Seikert looking to sit right on the face of that red stone. He's going to cross it just a little bit. Nudges it back a couple of inches as well. A little bit of a decision here to be made for the Koreans. You could try to pick that clean. You do run the risk if you, if you take your own with it and roll out. Now you give Steve Laycock the chance to come around the corner guard, and he can come deep enough that uh, it makes the run back more difficult. But if you pick it clean, you don't have that problem. Really nice hit by Jung Duke Park. Laycock looking for the freeze again, this time Sean Meacham. Well, Chris really wants to go on this one. This is really, all way down. really curling as well. This might be straight come around now. So you see Chris switch around to the other side. They realized they weren't going to get the face of the red to try to bury it. Needed that little bit more weight as well. It's half in around. Still, that's that's a really good result to get out of a, a shot thrown so light. Pretty powerful sweep there to get that in the top eight and maybe half buried. That was almost another center guard. Another chance for the Koreans just to pick that one out. Not too worried about even trying to hold their shooter here. Throw the big weight, make sure the yellow goes away. Shooter will roll out of play as well. And again, Koreans sitting one. Now with only three stones left to go this end, Steve Laycock probably has to keep in mind the the blank possibility. So he'll play the hit and roll now. And if the Koreans make the run through, well, at least you've got the blank opportunity. There was always going to be a point where he couldn't play the freeze one more time. Sean Meacham looking for the hit and roll. It is a short roll. Only needs just a little bit more than a rock's width. Really having to go for the line, though. This might roll out past the guard. It is just out into the open. And now for Zhang, a chance to maybe put some pressure on. He could roll back in behind cover. He'd be full forefoot. Looks like he can see just all of it. Certainly we know that uh, there's plenty of finish with uh, the broom that he put down. you got to think he's throwing about hack weight probably. A 
Leading by a score of 3-1 to one as we play here in the fourth. The Koreans without last rock facing one right now, but a chance to hit, roll under cover, and put a little more pressure on Steve Laycock. They've had him under the gun. Pressures were on it early. Sean Meacham out there, just in case it doesn't get by the guard, it will rub. Pardon me, that is Steve, actually. They're both wearing hoodies and hats. It makes it hard to tell. <laughs> We've seen a few uh, multi-layer guys out there on the ice in Swift Current. You're you're at the facility, Rory. A little cold out on the ice level, is it? Well, you know, I was, I was thinking the same thing based on, like you said, the attire. But then I went out through 16 rocks last night, and I actually broke a sweat. So what does that say about me, and what does that say about the ice? I'm not so sure. I saw Kevin Cooey with his winter jacket on, so... That's nothing new. I think he's wearing that in June. I've certainly played in colder. But, uh, you know, it appears to be. It's whatever these guys think that they need. Uh, some people run hot. I'm one of them. <laughs> so this would be my ideal rink. I wouldn't sweat on TV if I was playing this game right now. So with that, that boom, looks like Steve Laycock uh, just splitting the rings here. I thought he might look at trying to Christmas tree it. Granted, a tougher shot. You make sure you get your deuce here if you play to the open side. Yeah, fourth end. I think Team Laycock trying to stay confident, trying to keep their expectations in, you know, in a reasonable place. We just need two. Don't have to go crazy. And I think they see a good opportunity to get to, and they're going to take that, that confident path to setting up. Yeah, chance for two. Now, the downside to that is Jung's still going to have the chance to play the hit and roll behind cover for Shot Rock. Yep. Steve Laycock, certainly not light on this. Is that deep enough to leave the double? They're looking at it. They moved the guard over on the first one, so they, they have plenty of that rock available in daylight to play for a, a big roll. It is going to be fairly thick, probably about two-thirds. It might be there. Cleaning up the path over to that rock, so it looks like they're going to give it a go. Steve wanted to be about a foot higher with that stone. Still, these shots are not easy. Now, there's some, some players, even some players in this field. Kevin Cooey comes to mind who are very good at these shots, but the things people forget are as, as good as a player might be at these shots, you still don't make all of them. It's a long ways between those two rocks. They were on the brush right away. Now at the end, looking for a little bit of curl. Actually probably had the line, but yeah. with that much distance between them, the second one stays in the rings. And right Steve when Laycock. he threw it, Sean, I thought to myself, I'm, I'm not sure if that's enough weight. <laughs> Grant, granted, you, you, needed, you only needed just marginally more to make that second yellow rock leave the rings, but just a little more weight would have done it. A little more weight or, you know, if he hits the first one just fractionally thinner and hits the back end of the second rock, if by hitting the first one thinner, he'd carry more weight across too. Yeah. The other thing is, had he been able to throw the... Uh, the intern, he really couldn't because of where the guard was. You could use the uh, the rotation on the stone to get a little bit more action, but he really had to throw the out. Get the flat roll. Steve Laycock now with his final stone, just needs the nose hit. Did have a chance for three in the last end, just over curled on his final stone. Nice bounce back for team right Laycock. You'd see Chris Eichert raise his broom. They nice one there. Yep. With the hit, the roll to bite the edge of the forefoot, he picks up two points. Steve Laycock closes to within 4-3. It'll be Zhang with last rock when we come back.
I've been raised on the farm since day one, so I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come, so. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. The Roaring Game. We all love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. First stone of this fifth end. The center guard you see thrown by Braden Stewart. Now the Koreans looking to play the tick here in the fifth end. They were on this tick one rule. right away. Tick rule wouldn't have saved this guard. Just a little bit off the center line. Doesn't look like it needs saved. Gets right to the nose of it. Steve Laycock. Not even looking to sweep this one because it's going to end up dead buried. Almost. Did look like that for a second. It was going to do that uh, yeah. kind of snake snake action where you hit it with the out turn, the stone takes an in turn, and it's just that perfect S turn to, to bury it. I've seen it happen before. And it did take the in turn, but it took a lazy in turn, so it, it warped at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still, it gives... Uh, Steve Laycock, something to work with. He's got one center guard already. That, granted, it does belong to the Koreans, so he's going to look to throw a tighter guard, probably at least partly around that red stone. Second for Team Zhang, already getting his peeling muscles ready. He knows what's going to be asked of him in a few stones' time here. Well, I wondered if they wouldn't play it right now. You could peel your own red one right now. They're going to play the, the come around. Try to sit for shot rock, top of the house. Needs to just about bite the forefoot to do that. A lot of room by the stone at the top of the rings. Big finish. I'm thinking the attempted tick shot didn't really go. One thing, the, the big finish on these stones has held up. Wondering if the, the lead for Team Zhang kind of more specialized in the draw and guard game. They may have just been keeping keeping the player to what they know best, which is draws to the forefoot, guards up front. The the tick attempt didn't really go very well. I, I'm uh, honestly surprised they played the tick. It's, it's only the fifth end, and you're only up by a single point. And it's it's not even a great guard. It's it's a little bit long. Chris Heigert looking to sit on the corner of that shot stone. Nestles That's another up right good against freeze. It. Chris has made a couple this game. is another one of those situations that uh, you know for the viewer at home the guy that's used to playing their their thursday night men's league you might think the koreans are in good shape because they're shot but at this level steve laycock's in great shape right now <laughs> the koreans are in some trouble team laycock will have to work their way in there but certainly the, the elements are certainly in place for a 
overlapped messy four foot battle, which is exactly what Team Laycock would have went into this end hoping to create. Well, and he's got the great angle on those two stones after that freeze by Chris Hiker too. Even if you peel one of the guards, Laycock still got something. If you could make the double peel, Laycock will guard for a little while and let you peel guards until he decides he's ready to, to make a play on the stone in the house. So it looks like the Koreans, after discussing their options, they want to break that freeze. That, uh, that yellow-red at the top is just all kinds of problems for them. Yeah, it'll, ha it'll take a gentle tap um, to keep this shooter in a controlling position. And it'll have to curl a lot so they avoid rolling off, leaving an opening to roll back in. He's got a tighter in. line coming by than uh, Hikert did. I don't know if he's going to get by. Just rubs off the guard, does bring the shooter into the top of the 12 foot. I was wrong. Korean second not throwing a peel on his first <laughs> rock. Few ends in a row here, it, it feels like this team Zhang has been playing to their strengths. Just playing really confident shots, a lot of hits. Uh, looks like. Just in the last few ends here, though, at the end of three, of course, with that opportunity for three points, the fourth end where uh, Team Laycock got a miss out of the skip, and this fifth end for sure, forcing the play more into a, a style that's more uncomfortable for certainly Steve and the rest of the Saskatchewan-based team. Chris Heigert now just being asked to make a hit on that red stone, the 12-foot. They'll just try to stay right there. Maybe roll a little bit to the center line. And then again, it's it, the yellow-red in the house is lined up perfectly for Team Laycock, so he, he doesn't need to play it yet. He's, he can be patient. The Koreans kind of on the other side of that. What do we do? Like, they know that stone at the top of the four could go away any time. They don't have really, it would be tough to get through that port. I suppose you could play it a really tough shot. They don't have a way other than that to, to break that freeze on this shot. So he's looking at, at playing that same hit. At least have it be a red stone up at the top of the 12. to stay right there doesn't want to roll under cover well, they swept it like they were looking for a bit of a roll sliver of a roll is not bad it does give Steve Laycock the chance to play for the nose hit could kill both reds leave the shooter right there difficulty here if you're just a shade off the nose one way or the other one way you jam it the other way you drive it right by still even at that Steve Lycock would be in pretty good shape with those two stones at the top of the forefoot if you ever make it here you're sitting too buried and in this case your shooter doesn't have to roll anywhere Sean Meacham looking for the run catches the top one just a little off the nose, still with that big weight, able to spill both reds. His shooter did roll far enough, though, that the Koreans do have a way to get in there. Boy, if that comes up a whisker more, his shooter stays right there. Yeah, the, nearly a really good results. You know, making the action happen in the forefoot that they needed to make happen and maintaining control over the front of the house. That was almost a almost a really really good scenario still looking pretty good but yeah it's still pretty good but it does give the koreans a way in and the question that i have here it's hard to tell when he hits that stone and rolls it, it if you're playing the hit and roll behind the one that sean meacham just threw and if he makes that is he second shot or is it the one at the, or shot rocker is it the one at the back it's hard to tell also not sure if he gets some finish here he might even be able to clip the one at the back 
They'll have to flirt with the guard to do that, and uh, they jump the sweep right away. Still backing off the line, though, so they can back away a little bit now. Now really moving. That late little bit of finish. Does he clip the stone at the back? Rubs it. But I think it is still Laycock sitting shot rock at the back of the eight. The stone just delivered by the Koreans is second. So Steve Laycock looking to come around from the intern side. Sean Meacham with his second stone this end. Chance to sit two. And now by getting a rock into the button area, you'd be in a stronger steel position. You can really feel Team Laycock coming alive here. A little more physically active, a little more expressive, celebrating their shots a little more. They can, they can sense opportunity here. They've been, they've been steadily regaining momentum. The Korean stone's still wide open in the eight foot, but to make a play on it, even if you roll behind cover, you're just, you're not even gonna be full eight. And with where that red stone is, the Koreans can't really use it either because uh, they can't really hit the outside of it. Just because of where the yellow guard is, the tight yellow guard. Sean Meacham pulls that stone into the top of the button. And the Koreans looking at the only way they can get to the outside of the red stone to play the red onto the yellow is to play the yellow guard in towards it. You don't love running the other team's rock into the rings like this, but there's not a lot of distance between them. And at the very least here, you'd hope that you maybe clean up the edge so that you might have uh, both sides available with your last one. If you could stuff this, you're back to potentially scoring two as well. Looking for yellow onto red onto shot stone. Close. A little thin on the first one comes over the top of the red. Does make contact with Shot Rock, but the redstone spills a little too far. It's still Steve Laycock sitting one at the back of the eight foot. Yeah, that was definitely something to consider. What was going to happen to that top yellow stone? I understand the action they were trying to create in the forefoot, but they've really left that Meacham thrown stone in a really good spot for Team Laycock. It is. I don't know that you necessarily want to tap that. I think Steve Laycock looking at the open draw first from the other side. It is the shot that Meacham just played. For the Koreans, though, they do uh, now at least give them give themselves a chance to draw on either side if they have to. Steve Laycock's got to make sure he buries this well enough. I'm not sure where he's tapping the ice is where you want to leave this. That Yellowstone top of the 12-foot is just fully exposed, so if you don't dead bury this they can run it in on a bit of an angle and make the double and completely clear the front i feel like that that shot might be available no matter what I, i'm not sure where you can put this yellow rock where there's not going to be a double on the outturn side well no you're right there's going to be the double for sure but i i don't know my feeling is you want to put this where he's got to hit it right on the nose because that way his shooter is not going to clear his shooter's going to have to stay there, and he's still not going to have a draw path to the button. The stone at the back yeah. of the eight is still going to be shot rock. I just don't think you want to leave him a shot where he can drive this in on a bit of an angle and make the double and clear off the draw path. Yeah, yeah. Ideally, if you could put this right back where Sean Meacham just had it. And see from that straight on angle how hard this rock is, is curling in here. He's very close to the line that Sean had. Just a little bit higher, but close to the same line. I think that kind of uh, forces what you were talking about, Sean. You might have to make this double kind of more on the nose. Yeah, the, the fuller you have to hit that rock. I mean, they're close together. If he wants to really whip it, he could probably make it with... Uh, now three quarters and at least spin the top rock out of the way. The stone at the back of the eight foot is still going to be shot rock if you make the double. It's 
park. I think looking at, do we ever think about just playing the draw here? I, I don't think you do. Really hard to make the draw good enough that uh, Steve Laycock, Steve Laycock couldn't come down and even if he just taps the one he just threw. And then it's probably a steal. See if we can get a little fuller angle here. There we go. The only things they've really pointed at are the double and the and the come around from the outturn side. But again, that first of all, the outturn come around is tough. Secondly, even if you make it, Steve Lightcock is going to have a shot with his last one to set up a steal that you may not be able to do anything about. I think it's more important here. To make sure you're going to have a shot with your last one, and that's what they've settled on. Even if he has to stay right there, at the very least, he's going to have a tap with his last one. Boy, they do not have a lot of ice here. Worst case scenario would be to rub the guard. Nothing out of the brushes early. Got to be close to the nose here. Makes the double. Oh, wow. A little unfortunate in that he clips his own on the way by. So now, definitely, Steve Laycock with the chance to come around. and The question will be, how deep do you want to go? And that's what they're talking about. Do we try to set this just full eight foot so that he can't play the, the red run? That double and leaving leaving a rock available for promotion at the top of the rings. I mean, the the opportunity to steal one was there for Laycock all all end, but there was dangers of giving up a steal of two or more at, at a lot of points during this end. Clear the forfeit there with the last two shots, and to give yourself probably two options: an intern or an outturn to hopefully only give up one, maybe even score one yourself. It's a huge swing for Team John. You can see uh, Sean Meacham turn around and say, nice shot. I have no idea if the Koreans understood what he said, but uh, you kind of, you know, it's that curler etiquette, whether they understood the English or not, I'm sure they, they knew what he meant. Got the nod of acknowledgement. Steve Laycock now with his final stone in this fifth end, sitting one at the back of the eight foot, a chance to come around to the top four foot, potentially set up a steal here. Needing a single point to tie the game. He's got a lot of room by the front this time. Rushers haven't touched it. Don't want to be behind the T-line. Well, and that's going to slide just a little bit deep. And now certainly, Jung has a shot to score. He just has to follow that stone down. Steve won't be happy with that. Wanted to be just a little bit deeper than he was in the last one but uh, definitely wanted to keep it in front of the T-line. Take that rock there and put it uh, that much biting the top of the button, and it's real tough for the Koreans to score. Facing two, yet with that stone sliding that deep, you really shouldn't have to flirt with the guard to, to catch enough of the button here. Jung, his final stone. Needs the button to pick up the point. Rusher's really just cleaning early. Park in the house indicating it's still got lots of line. This has plenty of room by the guards. This looks like it might be a little strong as well. Boy, we've seen players do that before. You try to throw to the backing, and when you throw that little bit extra weight, you don't get the same curl. It slides 
far enough, it's actually a steal of two for Steve Laycock. And out of nowhere, Steve Laycock jumps out to a 5-4 lead after five ends of play. The Koreans will still have last rock in the sixth. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Now leading by one, the Laycock team puts the first stone into the top of the forefoot. Jung now looking for the corner guard. Rory, it's been an interesting game, a lot of rocks in play, but really the story of this game is, is two, uh, you'd have to say, unexpected misses from either skip. Uh, Steve Laycock with a chance in, uh, I believe it was the third end, to score three. Maybe turned his last one a little bit inside and ends up giving up a steal of one, a swing of four points, really, from possibly getting three to giving up a steal of one. And now here in the fifth end, the Korean skip, chance to draw for one. He was given a, enough room on his last one, slides it through, and it's actually a steal of two, a three-point swing. So Steve Laycock with the lead here as we begin play in the sixth. Steve Laycock with the lead and Team Laycock with all the momentum, I would say. Um it's early yeah, on in the game the korean team looked very comfortable and both in that fourth end fifth end just a lot of good work by team laycock to dictate play and it's paid off for them of course the the skip had the button and could have made uh, the korean skip jung could have made that shot but as we both saw that end developing the fifth was very favored Steve Laycock. This is one of those situations, though, and, and I don't know whether the Koreans have a have a coach with them. A lot of the international teams do travel with the coach since they're over here anyway. But uh, if you were talking about it before the game, if you were pre-planning the game, if you were talking with your coach, the coach would have said, you know, if we're... For one down play in six with last rock, we're happy with that, right? Well, that's where they are. Nice freeze made there by Sung. Chris Heikert looking to follow it down. He'll sit right on the face of the red. These are the That's ends that I freeze. enjoy. These are the ends Press. I enjoy. It's uh, freeze after freeze after freeze. Both teams looking for a little advantage on the angle, and all it takes is one slight miscue, and, and all of the angles work for one team or the other, and the, then you're in trouble. The precision on these shots, is, I don't know if everybody appreciates it. On Chris's first rock for quite a few ends in a row here, the freeze has been the call, and he's made every single one, so... Good streak going for Chris Hiker on that three stone, anyway. Chris 
Green's looking to follow it down. He's going to have a little bit more weight this time. Nudges it. Still, I think the angles work out okay for them. The red-red lines up to the yellow very nicely, and they did get the uh, the yellow just delivered by Chris Heikert. They've got it off the freeze position. The angle on the two reds so good for the Koreans. Steve Laycock looking at... Uh, making a play to move those things, jiggle them around. He's going to move their own stone back, the shot stone. But it's in a vulnerable position with those two reds angled onto it. So needing to do something to break that up, asking Chris Eichert to come down, jiggle the two reds, knowing he's going to move his own stone. I'm going to leave the shooter in a good position here. Needs to get close to the nose on the first one. Clips the second, moves the uh, yellow back, and now the, the two reds have kind of a pocket behind the stone that was just thrown. So you could run it up, double the two reds if you needed to. It is the uh, Korean stone at the top of the button sitting shot rock. Laycock has second at the back. Hard to tell right now who's got third. Doesn't matter how tight you zoom with that camera, it's still hard to tell who's got third. <laughs> yeah, it looks, a, looks yellowish to me, but yeah. Unlikely I would, that these stones are going to stay in this position yeah, for much longer. The, the two stones were debating whether your third shot, they're, either one of them's in bad spot for the other team being in the top of the forefoot, so I wouldn't be surprised to see both of them move before the end is over. Korean's wondering how they can deal with that Laycock stone already. This is the type of skill set that Steve Laycock's just so strong with. Good look at it there from the hack end. This yellow stone that is either third or fourth, it's probably a third, third to a half under the guard. If the Koreans are going to try to tap it. It's pretty hard to tap it without touching it off the redstone. Mind you, they don't like it where it is. So I think that's what they're going to play come down to it, try to move it, even if you move the red one with it, as long as you get it behind the T-line. And uh, try to leave the shooter right there where it's a stone you can use later. Well, and the more he looks at it now, thinking maybe they should move the center guard. Make a case for that too. It is getting pretty congested in the forefoot area. to looking to get a good angle on that one at the top four foot. I don't think they're looking to move it. I think looking just to try to get to the face of it. Put a red stone in a position here where you can maybe move the yellow by your own shot rock later. were on this early. Looks like he's got room by the front. Comes down, nudges it up, and leaves the shooter right there. A good team shot from Team Jung there. Yeah, that's a good shot. It gives them an escape route for that yellow stone now, and actually I think if you ever had to run anything back red onto yellow, it kind of looks like it might catch the yellow at the back of the forefoot as well. Well, Sean, with no no clocks on these teams, we may have a 25-minute end coming our way here. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you've got... There's already four rocks touching the forefoot, and a fifth one is very close. The angles all matter here. Uh, six end, just so important, especially in these tight one-point tied games. 
sixth end is where you really see that analytical jump of who scores when and and how much. That, I'm willing uh, to go out and look. Yeah. Willing to go out on a limb and say we're not going to see a blank end here. Doesn't look like it right now, but with with how close those stones are together, hey, we might see a lot of them moving at once at some point here. I think uh, we've talked a bit about Steve Laycock and the strength of this team. He, he's going to try to manipulate angles. I don't think he's ever going to look at blasting anything. He's already looking at manipulating the angles. You can see the the shot he's looking at. Take that yellow in the eight foot move the red one that was just delivered and then spin into the pocket of the two reds in the top four foot. He right now really doesn't have a great way to, to kill a redstone. The only redstone he could really kill would be the, uh, what is fourth shot on the edge of the four foot. And that rock's not really causing him any trouble right now. The other two both causing problems. I don't think he's got a shot to kill them, but he does have the shot, again, the shot he was looking at. If he can catch the outside of that yellow, I think you want to touch the red on the other side of the center line. You don't have to kill it, but move it out into the open. Spin the ray stone into the, uh, into the pocket. Looks like he's going to play with some weight, though, so this will be yellow onto red. He's going to lose his stone at the back. He knows that, but it's that stone's not really helping him right now, and and this is the only way he can create a uh, a path to get that redstone out. He's going to have to get rid of the one behind it. Doesn't like the fact that there's a straight across wall there protecting that, that redstone that was just thrown. Sean Meacham. Boy, this is really curling. I don't think he's getting by the front one. They were on it right away. He will be all over the guard. Well, I'm sure that wasn't in the plan. Now the question is, two questions I've got in mind. If you play the red onto the yellow, does it double the two yellows at the back? And regardless of that, do you play it now? because you're going to group your four red stones when you do that. If you do play it, how hard do you want to play it? You don't necessarily have to kill those yellows. You could leave them at the back of the eight, but probably still be sitting at least three. And I'm sure that's, that's what the Koreans are discussing right now. The other advantage to that is is you're hitting it basically dead on. So your shooter will become the next rock that gets bashed into the forefoot in the next shot. I think you're coming across the face of it to play it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so you come across the face to hit it on the center line side a little bit. Drive the red onto the yellow. The yellow hopefully clips the one at the back of the forefoot. Now your shooter's going to come possibly just underneath and there you can see him tapping the broom you, you might be able to get it staggered just underneath that yellow at the top of the eight foot would you ever kick that yellow out of the way enough that it's no longer relevant to being promoted in um you could i'm not sure you want to like i'm thinking if you can get just underneath it you stagger the two and then there's no real way for uh, steve laycock to get at the two stones at the top of the four foot now i'm I am surprised they're playing like this is a this is a draw with the ice that they're that they're putting down. I thought they'd play enough weight to move it. It's possible that what they're looking at here is just play one more draw, tap the red onto the yellow, and and again leave all the angles in your favor. You certainly could do it that way. Play the. Uh, Still the same piece that I was just talking about. You, you come just across the face of the redstone at the top of the 8-foot, tap it up to a freeze on the yellow, and now with that little bit of angle, certainly the uh, hitting the red again should kill the two yellows off the 4-foot. And if you could just roll your shooter just so that any piece of it is underneath that yellow in the 8-foot, Steve Laycock can't use it and has no uh, direct access to shot stone.
delicate touch shot here, but potential for a great result. This is close. This is real close. Nudges the stone a little bit, but there you can see the shooter has got just a sliver under the edge. Yeah. Steve Laycock, the, the stone that was promoted up did bounce. It, it did uh, move the yellow a little bit. You might be able to hit the outside of that stone and, and kill two reds. Things definitely got more dangerous for Team Laycock here. It's the oh, hopes of sure. removing all those reds out of the top four foot and leaving your yellow in a place where you can use it again or pretty much nil. Might be a, a nose triple on that top red, Sean. Nah, yeah, probably maybe stuffs, it, stuffs it, directly in there. Yeah, it depends how it comes back. And there's also the, the danger that when you stuff it back, that stone at the top of the button might just be coming into the two yellows. I, I wonder, uh, obviously can't drive the Yellowstone at the top of the eight foot into shot rock, but can you drive it? Can you see enough of it still to drive it into what is, uh, well, the stone right there, the right hand side of the four foot. Can you drive it onto that rock and have it spin back in towards that's the shot? Yeah, stone? That's what it's... So it's just, you're just killing one, but then trying to bring it back and boy, it looks from the overhead. It looks like that's there. You can, if you drive it towards the stone on the right side of the forefoot, as we look at it from the overhead, I think it misses the one at the top of the eight foot. For that matter, you could maybe hit the yellow on the nose and kind of get it redirected onto that stone. You'd kill the one at the top of the eight foot and the uh, yellow would come across and get the one on the right side of the forefoot. Just shows how critical rolling that shooter was in that last last shot of Jean to get yeah. that corner around and take away that intern tap. Yeah, it was critical to do that, but the other side of that, he, he bumped that a little too far uh, because now he still doesn't have angle. You know, By bumping the second yellow stone, yellow sitting second and third at the back of the forefoot, and he doesn't have access to the stone that he was going to try to use to kill that. He, had he kept them frozen... And granted, that's a really tough shot. We're talking about trying to play across the face and tap a rock a foot instead of two feet. And uh, they had to hold the line. They ended up with a perfect line, just, just bumped it a little harder than they might have liked. They can point all they want. It's hard to see. Uh, I, I don't know that they've looked at the option that I was discussing just to play the yellow onto the red. It's possible they've looked at it and they just feel like they can't hit it where they need to hit it to spin it back into the forefoot. And if, and if you were just going to dead stuff it, it, it probably isn't helping you. This I wonder if one Steve's area. looking at getting, getting these very thin and trying to move trying to move all four reds not sure if you remove them what play the, the the red as close to the nose as you can and maybe get the around the horn on the three in the house yeah might be, might be what he's looking at we know sean meacham can throw the weight the broom location i gotta think that's what they're playing now he's got to hit this first one very close to the nose and this is still backing off the line this is not going to be what they wanted. Hits the first one very thin, comes across, catches another red, jams it onto the back one. It is still uh, the Koreans sitting one, but now they have a shot. Whereas with the overlap before, they couldn't promote that red onto the yellow at the back of the forefoot. They have a shot to do that now. And we're getting into the late enough in the end where you might have to think about playing it now. You could, if you chose, play it one more time, just play it as the tap. Really, all you have to do with that Yellowstone, if you could move it back six inches, you're probably sitting three.
hard to think if you play it as a hit, you're still going to have a hard time getting a lot of separation on the four reds. Pretty These sure they're playing are almost, it. Situations are almost difficult to manage when you you have hammer and things are looking so good. It's, it's sometimes tough to think how do I how do I improve something that's already really beneficial for me. Well, and part of the issue here for the Koreans is it's hard to to make anything good in this middle and separate the four red rocks. Well, if you can't separate them, then maybe you want to keep that yellow at the back somehow. So it looks like they're playing essentially the same type of shot. Just tap that red up. This time you might want to move the yellow, but, but you don't need to kill it. You only need to move it about, as I said, six inches. You're probably sitting three. And Steve Laycock might have access to a double, but I don't think there's going to be any triples. He has to get to the inside of this. Needs the weight as well, so they're on the brush. He's close. Gets the tap. Taps it to the corner of the yellow. Not enough to move it, but it does sit two. Gets to, uh, gets to throw basically the same path. Third for Team Zhang. Two really big tap packs. Giving his team a really good opportunity to score big here. Yeah, they're looking good for at least two right now. Steve Laycock might have no choice but to play, and that what they're looking at is the short run on the yellow, try to get it to the inside of the stone at the top of the forefoot, kick across and, and move the stone that was just delivered. The yellow will stay right there on the center line. It's still going to leave the Koreans sitting too. You're not going to touch any of the ones at the back of the four. hit the yellow on the other side of the stone at the top of the forefoot you might be able to make a double the stone top four and the stone back button but when you hit that you're going to kick your own out the side the greens are still going to be sitting two steve i think now looking is there any way we can chisel this one thin enough to to drive it into the one that was just thrown and then spin back onto the one at the top of the the four foot this is about as ugly as it gets sean <laughs> it's tough to find yourself in in much more trouble than this this camera angle i like this camera angle because one thing that it does illustrate if if uh, steve wants to run this into the angle so run it across yeah. the face of the, the red at the stop, top of the forefoot there's not a lot of room between that rock and the uh the red stone at the top of the eight so you know, I don't think he could, for instance, drive it across the top of the stone in the forefoot and then bring it off the back of the other stone. They're, they're just too close together. I think, if anything, it's just going to sit right there. Sure. Still, that, that would be a better situation than what he's looking at right now. And So I think that's what they've called. Going to have to throw some weight at this, I would think. You'd like to give yourself a chance to kick that one at the top of the eight all the way out if you could. Your rocks are grouped too. You don't want to uh, give them too many chances to bring them all back in. You'd like to kill two here. Steve Lycock with the big weight. Looking to hit the outside of the yellow. Well, hits it a little closer to the nose than I thought they were playing for. It does catch the stone at the back. But as I said, if you play it that way, you're going to kick your own out of the Back four foot. Koreans sitting one right now, but they also have third and fourth. And the first discussion there, and I think that's probably what they're going to end up playing. Just try to touch that stone up enough to be sitting one, two, and leave your shooter angled on that yellow at the top of the eight foot. Outturn two foot tap has done them pretty well the last two shots. <laughs> you don't even need two feet on this one. Two inches. It's almost like you're drawing to the pocket, but you do want to move the redstone. And then Steve Laycock has a problem. The only shot that he might have would be the double tap on the yellows, but that's why you don't want to move this, uh, the redstone. If you play it like you're coming to the pocket, if he makes the tap, you've still got your own redstone.
play the short little runner that would be for probably three. This is where I almost need a telestrator. You almost have to draw them out to see how much space there is. I, I don't... If they, if they go in the order that I just said, I don't think there's any way the one at the back of the 8-foot still counts. So looking to get to the pocket on the red-yellow. Doesn't want to move the yellow. Would like to move his own red. Has to get to the inside. If he doesn't get to the inside, you could leave a triple. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. Those are he's some left, scary angles. For he's left himself dogs. angle to play red onto yellow at the top. And for Steve Laycock, if he plays the double tap on the yellows, which might be all he's got, once he taps it in for shot rock, that uh, red that was just tapped up is still high enough that uh, Jean could, could angle it in there and... I think that's for that would be for three. So the question, I guess, becomes what else do you see? Might be a might be a desperation tap here just to get shot rock somehow. Looking at the in off, I don't don't love that. I, I Steve's I Steve I thought was on the right track there, and it's a tougher shot. Instead of playing the angle yellow yellow, try to play the yellow close to the nose. So you tap the first yellow back, catch the side of the yellow, and and maybe touch the red on the way by so that it breaks the angle as it spins back. And also the second yellow will spin a little farther into the eight foot, might cut things down that way. Yeah, I, I get exactly what you're saying and. It's a In tough shot. Yeah, you, you try to take away both angle runbacks on the reds. You, you need to manage the distance that those rocks roll to just so perfectly. Yeah, but. tough shot. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, he could take away both of them. He could actually hit uh, the top one just on the center line side, roll his shooter a little bit to take away the one that uh, was just thrown. And then when it taps back, because now you're coming thinner on the uh, stone at the top of the eight foot it should come more sideways and hopefully change the angle on the reds in the forefoot looking now uh there's another option he's looking at stuffing the reds i think red onto red yeah. on the red you're, the only one you're going to kill is the back one but they're probably well, only sitting one after that do you think there, there's enough space if you threw enough weight you would kill the bottom two reds Perhaps that, that middle red goes spinning yeah. to the left out of the house. No, I don't think you can see enough of the red to do that. You'd have to hit the red awfully thin to, to drive it over the top, and your yellow's in the way. With huge weight, I feel like that middle red might, might kick. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I, I just... If you could hit the uh, if you could hit the first stone thinner than half, driving it across and get some some uh, drag that way, maybe. But hitting it straight, I feel like it's pretty close to a dead jam. And the other danger here is you hit this anywhere on the broom side, you're killing your own. Even nose might kill your own. Yeah, it might give that red rock a bit of a different angle, more of an inside-out angle. It might push the middle red a little further further outwards. We're going to find out. Ooh. doesn't look like he's trying to kill them both. He's, he's playing what I was talking about, just uh, red onto red onto red. Just stuff everything, leave them sitting one, and change all the angles. Has to get across the nose. This is close. If I feel like no, they're trying he... to get the yellow. He's playing the first shot I talked about, the yellow onto yellow on the angle to push it into the side of the red. Not bad. They may have left an opening on their shooter. 
or the the second yellow rock tap tough to keep track of all these rocks yeah the top I, of the I don't think they did if you if you look at it from the hack end that to come off the stone at the edge of the eight foot i know which one you're looking at you have to hit it awfully thin well i don't think he's got room by the stone in the 12 foot to hit it thin you can measure it with your brooms all you like i don't think i don't think you're ever hitting that thin enough there's not there's not room to get a rock through there and and it's paper thin about an outturn kind of big weight and you try to catch the middle red to to kind of stuff that onto the the yellow and the forefoot it might only be for one uh it's probably for two and and that was the shot they were going to have all along now the bonus and that's the discussion with steve laycock the way they played it by touching the stone the way they did when they bring that second stone across sideways in the eight foot it is now beating out the one at the top of the eight boy we're never going to get a camera angle to be able to see it. Maybe. Could you hit the one in the 12 foot? Straight back. Boy, it looks like if you look at the hack shot, the shot from the hacks, it does look like you could get that by the red and clip the yellow. Still oh, just for two. It's still just for two. Just that two inches or maybe an inch and a half poking out. I, I see what you're talking about. This shot, I'm, I'm not sure this is even there. Your only way to get this might actually be off the yellow, catch the back end of the red at the top of the forefoot, and uh, then squirt straight back, which, which you know, that might be there. Or more. That it, uh, it, it all depends on how the one comes back, because if it jams on that stone at the back of the eight foot, it still might only be for two. But if it clears it, it could be for four. It's coming so tight to that top yellow you'll have to be to get this thin enough uh depends if they're coming off the red at the top of the four it's not quite as thin i i don't think you can ever get it thin enough to come directly to the yellow shot stone we're about to find out certainly got the shot here. catches the yellow does get it thin enough one two three four it's five after making the double for the koreans they jump out to a nine to five lead steve laycock Gave him the good shot signal as it was still coming into the house. Does look like uh, we are going to have a seventh end, though. Steve Laycock trailing by four. We'll see if he can generate some big points when we come back. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. You can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Well, if you're just joining us, you might want to go hit rewind on your YouTube channel and take a look at the last shot thrown by... Young Suk Jun, his final stone in the sixth end. I have to admit, I, I wasn't sure there was room to, 
to hit that rock thin enough, but you do sometimes have to defer. We've we've only got the overhead look from from the center line. You do have to defer to the players on the ice. They can see the angles. He felt good about making it, and really, he had a little bit of room by the rock at the top of the eight. Had plenty of room. Makes the double. Stays right there. Count five. And now, as we begin play here in the seventh end, they've got a four-point lead. Steve Laycock really needs to generate some points here. They might have confused Steve at the very least. They threw the first one into the top of the rings. I don't think Steve was expecting them to throw a guard here. And now knowing that uh, this is a situation where you know they can peel their own guard, so you're going to throw a high guard on the red guard just so that they can't peel anything on the next one. Really entertaining end, that sixth end. It's fun to watch that as that built up, we, we knew the whole time that there was trouble brewing for one of those teams. Kind of shifted from Laycock advantage slowly to a Jeong advantage and then from some not very specific shots from Meacham and Laycock, it just built and built and built and Team Jeong able to make the magic happen and score their five points. Well, if you're Steve Laycock, you're happy here, at least in the seventh end, that you've got some rocks to work with on the other side of it for Zhang. He doesn't have to be overly concerned. He doesn't care if he gives away two here. Even three would not be the end of the world. So He's not too panicked about the rocks up front yet. He could make a play on his own, but if he ever tried to uh, peel that red guard and clip the yellow, it goes back, and that's a, a nothing rock. So you play one more at the top of the forefoot here. Steve Laycock's going to have to deal with those rocks at some point in time. Doesn't have to be yet, but a chance to come down, play the freeze, maybe tap them a little bit. Chris Heikert has made a number of good freezes here. He'd like to move this maybe six inches to leave the reds as a pocket behind, uh, behind his yellow instead of a stagger like that. little bit extra weight looking for the tap though he doesn't get quite as much finish tops it behind the t-line but his shooter stays in the spot where the greens can make a play on it yes they might lose their own stone but they're not too worried about losing their own stones as long as the yellow ones go away <laughs> sounds like uh from the hack end, they didn't like the looks of that shot, so they're going to play the double peel. There's actually, just because of the way they're lined up, if you're over the top on the first one, that redstone belonging to the Koreans, it's going to come back in towards the house. You might get three or four rocks moving here if you hit this right. Park attempting the double peel just touches the second rock not enough to kill it and just moves it a little farther off the center line so still something for steve laycock to work with looking to bring another one in wide from the uh, intern side Comes down, sits on the corner of his own, and leaves the uh, two yellows angled onto the red. Jung already looking at the run back. The middle yellow probably not going very far. There's a couple of different ways he could pick one yellow. He hits it right on the nose. He, the top one will go. If he's a little off center on the first one, you might even pick that middle one out.
Park, the third, looking for the run back. It's going to be that little bit high and does catch the middle one. As I said, there was a couple of ways that could work out well for them. That actually might have been the best result because they kill one yellow and roll the shooter off of it. So it's it's Laycock sitting uh, second shot wide open. Shot Rock still belongs to the Koreans at the back of the forefoot. It's open as well. Steve asking Sean Meacham now to tap that stone up on a bit of an angle. He wants to get the shooter in behind cover. Get the Yellowstone into the back of the forefoot. I guess they're hoping that uh, the Koreans will make a hit attempt on the open stone. And if they nose it, you might have a pocket of two reds back there. You can freeze one into, try to get your three that way. Boy, this is really curling hard, though. He's got to get by the front one. It's not going to. get any kind of a plan B out of this well after chipping the guard he does roll over at least gets cover on the shot on the second shot stone Green's looking at the run back again this time uh, probably running it the other direction over the top that was the gesture anyway if you miss it over the top, you probably roll your shooter all the way across. A little dangerous to hit it the other way. You could uh, bring it into the redstone at the back of the forefoot. More risk than they have to take right now. Yeah, I was uh, thinking that myself. And yet, that's the direction he hit it. I, I, they definitely weren't playing it that way. They talked about that as being the danger. Kind of reminds me of the third end. Uh, Team Zhang up. Well, more than a few points at this at this point, and trying run backs missing by just a hair. So Laycock now three stones left to come. He's got second shot at the top of the rings. Would like to find a way to count three here. So looking at playing a bit of a split, what he wants to do, Sean Meacham, just touch the edge of that yellow stone, push it in behind the corner, and then have the shooter come back and freeze to the red stone at the back of the forefoot. And they're hoping then uh, Koreans will have to go for the stone in the back of the forefoot. Maybe jam it. This one's a little closer, actually. At the end, uh, really moving big. Looks like they're playing a similar shot to what they tried on the last one. Need a little, little bit more weight to make the, the tap and the roll. He's got a Team John hoping to roll behind the guard here? Well, that was the call. I, 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 I hear the question in your voice, and I've got the same question. Like, why wouldn't you just roll to the top of the forefoot here? You yeah, stay I mean, out on the. You roll to the center line. Well, what does Steve Laycock do? He can't. He can't ignore these rocks all day. He, he may not even score two. Hey, pedal yeah. to the metal. These, this team, uh, they knows what they know what the best result is, and they're going for it. Of course, that is that is well, a great result, but you're you're going to leave the half open where the double will be available. Is it a great result why. though? You roll in behind, they, and you might you might put this stone in a position where you can't kill the yellow stone that's in the top of the twelve foot. I I don't think you do want to roll that way at all. Like I, I don't think it's a great result even if you make it. You would have liked to stay in the forefoot, though, and this is going to roll too far for that. It does stay for second shot. That's important because uh, Steve Laycock is still going to have to deal with that rock at some point in time. He does probably have all of it. I think what he's looking at, do you, can you get to it from the outturn side, move it? Don't have to kill it, but you do have to move it to, to make sure your second shot on the other side. And you get your shooter under the corner guard. So that's what they're going to play. Not worry about Shot Rock right now. They know they'll have a chance to play on it with the last one. It's just a question of whether or not they'll have a chance for multiple points. You make this perfect. 
Young Suk Jun still going to have a shot at the uh, yellow on the other side in the 12th, but he's got half of that rock available. But, you know, when he can only see half, that, that is a little bit more tricky. Steve Laycock with his first stone here in the seventh end. Needs to move this red rock, get to the inside, get a little bit undercover. Braden Stewart has not left the brush all the way down, and this is going to be all over the guard. Does push it into the rings, into the eight foot, but it's uh, the Korean sitting shot and third. A chance to just hit and roll over and I, uh, I, unless you're seeing something I'm not seeing, Rory, I, I don't see how there's going to be a triple, which makes yeah, it. Yeah, you can uh, see. You can see the body language kind of deflate a little bit from from Team Laycock there. They, you can get away with a few sort of wicked and ticked missed shots, but this is really adding up, especially in the back end. Yeah. Team Laycock. That's one of the things you run into when you have to throw wide like that this late in the game. And, you know, in addition to, to rubbing the guard, well, obviously he was light, you know. If he if he gets around, he's just, he's basically just draw weight. He needed to move that red. And that's the thing. You're always guessing a little bit at the weight when you're out in the wings like that. Didn't need to whip it, but uh, certainly needed to move it. Jung with his final stone looking to hit, sit three. I'm not seeing a triple. Not a triple like where you keep your, your stone around anyway. Yeah, <laughs> Laycock kind of signaling that's the way you would remove three stones, but how would you ever keep your shooter around while doing that? They will look at all the options, see if they can find anything, and it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's a million to one shot at this point in time, you play it. What Steve looking at, the thin tick off the red guard, have the shooter come in, catch the red at the top of the eight foot. Can you get the triple that way? I think that would be the most impressive shot I've ever seen if they may, if they were to call and make that. Yeah, I have no idea if it's there, but it might be the only shot he's got. I mean, it, it, one point's no good, so they're not playing for one. If they play for one, they're, they're shaking hands anyway. Even even if you got two, you're in tough. Even if you could come at it from, uh, you'd have to throw it from the next sheet to come at it direct on this angle. It's yeah. hard to say if that triple's even there. Like you, you're going to play the red at the top of the eight foot across the face of the one at the back four foot and then have it come across and hopefully clip the one at the edge of the 12 foot. And I, I'm not sure that it does. Looks like they're going to play it direct and, and hope that they can keep the shooter as well, I guess. I don't know. With that ice, you, it must be a kind of down weight. They're hoping to throw just enough weight to remove the three reds. Yeah, you don't actually have to kill the third one. You only need to move it a couple of inches if you catch hey, the back point. end of it. But, but uh, the first two stones, excuse me, looks like you have to be uh, probably about half a rock on the first one to be across the face on the second one enough. And when you're hitting half a rock and still have to hold your shooter... That's where the trouble is. Little speck of something on that stone. <laughs> well, Steve Laycock with the throw. They were on the brush right away, but this one's already gone. He's past the nose. The handshakes have started already. It's another steal. And uh, the Koreans picking up the victory here in the C qualifying match. They'll move on to the championship round playoffs beginning tonight at nine o'clock or pardon me seven o'clock local time nine o'clock eastern 
we will have all of that action for you here on Sastel Curling Stadium. Quarterfinals tonight, the semifinals at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, and the championship final at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Be with us for all the action. My name is Sean Joyce. I was joined here tonight by uh, Rory McCusker, and we'll see you back here in about three hours. Thanks, Sean. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium.